Hi, I'm Lily. Today I'm going to show you how to make a miniature set from scratch and full of architectural trim. I've used this miniature set on my last stop motion animation. If you haven't seen it yet, I'm going to put a link above and in the description below. So first I'm going to show you how I made the main structure in plywood, then how I made the arch windows, the paneling, the column, the floor, the carpet ceiling, the doors, the wall lights, and finally the little desk. Enjoy this video. To create the set, first I've cut some plywood with a jigsaw, 9mm thick for the wall and 18mm thick for the base. I've also cut some studs. Then I've installed my stud on the table and lay the 18mm plywood sheet on top of it and make sure they line up correctly underneath. I drill into the plywood, use a countersink drill bit and then screw it together. I've also cut the walls out and cut the openings for the doors or the arch window. I lined up my walls against my board, drilled into it and screwed them together. I've attached quite a few screws because I wanted to make sure I have a stable wall and I continue doing this for the other walls as well. I've decided to create this set in two parts. This is the main part which is two thirds and the last third. I wanted to have more flexibility when it comes to animation and moving the walls and the set around. Then before I start to build the interiors, I like to work with mock-ups. So I did a quick desk, I use a puppet for proportion, start to place my column to see how they work with the space. And that allowed me to think about what exactly gonna be the right design and for the door in particular, what's gonna be the right height, the right width. Then I started working on the arch windows. First, I've used the compass to create a reference line all around the windows for the architrave. Then I used some warbler. It's a thermoplastic that is absolutely fantastic and very versatile. So I've cut some length of warbler to create my architrave, warm it up with a heat gun, and then place them along the window following my line. If the wall blast starts to cool down, just warm it up with a heat gun and keep shaping it all around the line. You can also add lots of details with just some sculpting tool, for example. As long as it's warm and soft, you can very easily sculpt it and add texture to it. Then I've placed a piece of paper underneath and outlined with the pencil the shape of my window. Then I took some time to design the window, then place a piece of polypropylene sheet on top of it, add some tape to hold it in place, and use some 3D paint. My favorite is Pebbles and Relief to copy every line onto polypropylene sheets. I've let that dry overnight. While that was drying, I started to work on the paneling. First, I made a sketch directly on the plywood to define the height, the width of every single part. And then I use some balsa wood, 3mm thick, and a hot glue gun to construct it. I've also add some chair rail and a window seal. And then decide to add some detail with the paper or sand relief inside of the paneling. For all the doors, I've used some 1mm thick balsa wood and cover all the inside. Then I've glued together different thicknesses and width of basil wood to create the detailed architrave and make sure that I place them correctly, they lined up and they are the same on either side. I've also added the paneling, make sure it's the same design and the height than the rest of the room. I've added some detail with the sculpting tool into the basil wood because it's so soft, so you can just press the sculpting tool and it will mark very easily. And finally, add some detail with the papyrus and relief to make sure it matched the rest of the room. So there you go. You can see the little details and component for one wall. Once the papyrus and relief was completely dry, I primed the whole thing with a white gesso. Then apply two coats of acrylic onto the wall, onto the paneling and around the windows. Then I've sealed the whole thing with a clear sealer. 
and start aging it. I apply some diluted grey brownish paint and remove the excess with a wet paper towel. I've also used a different colour wash all around the windows to make them more realistic. And finally, I've applied a clear matte varnish. Once the windows were dry, I placed them in position against my board, tape it with duct tape at the back, and added the final beads all around the windows. It will cover the edges and bind everything together. Now I'm going to talk about the column. To create those columns, I've reused some cardboard rolls that you can have inside tubes of aluminum foil or cling film. I've cut them to size and taped them together so I have the right heights. Those tubes were hollow so I had to fill the void on each side so I have something to attach it later on. So I've just rolled up some cardboard and used the hot glue gun to make sure it holds in place. And as you can see, I've got something to work with now. Then I warm up a piece of warbler with a heat gun and place it all around the bottom and the top of the tube. Then for the next layer, I've hot glued first some sticks all around my column. Then I warm up a bigger piece of warbler and I took the time to place it all along. I've used another dowel to press into the shape to make sure all the lines will be marked. As long as it's warm, you can stretch it and it will stick to itself. So hopefully you have a piece that is large enough to cover the whole column. Then to create the base of the column and the top, I've used some bit of timber. I've drilled into them and hammer a wooden dowel. Then I've hot glued the top part, which has a wooden dowel into it. And I also hot glue the bottom part. Then I've added a last piece of warbler along the top and the base to add a little detail and hide the edges. And there you go, you've got a column. Then I've used some leftover piece of plywood, drill into them so that I can place my column and that will hold them in position while I prime them with a white gesso and then paint them. And I've used a sponge to add lots of different colors. I've also aged them, dirty wash and seal them. Now I'm going to talk about the part that sits directly above the column called entabler, entabler, something like that. <laughs> I've cut some foam board, five millimeter thick, and hot glue it together in two layers so I have something thicker to work with. I've hot glue a piece of card at the edge because that's what I had on the hand that day and use sanding paper to make sure I have a smooth edges. Then I've added some wooden trim all around that will hide the edges, but also make it more stable when I attach it to the wall. Then I prime it with white gesso and paint it. And then I've placed it onto my wall and hot glue it in place. Then I drill it from above and place my column from underneath with a wooden dowel going through the entabler. Now I'm going to talk about the floor. I took some time to design an interesting pattern for my floor and made a sketch first on paper. Define what's going to be the lighter color, the darker color. Then I copy it on a piece of five millimeter EVA foam and I've actually used my paper template to copy all my lines and my reference points. Then I went outside with the wood burning tool, gloves and mask, and I copy every single line. And if you wonder, yes, it took me forever. Then I've primed the whole thing with Plasti Dip, few layers of it. Then I've painted the whole thing, seal it, apply some diluted gray paint to create the grout, remove the excess with wet paper towel and seal it with a clear matte varnish. Once the whole thing was dry, I apply some contact adhesive or contact cement at the back of the foam and I've also applied it onto the plywood. I let it dry probably 10 minutes until it stopped being tacky and then I've pressed the foam against the plywood. 
At that stage, I placed both of my boards for the base together. Once the whole thing was pressed, I cut the edges. I always make sure I design a piece that is slightly bigger than my board so I can cut the edges. It's much better than the opposite scenario when you don't have enough and you have a gap. Then when everything was done, I finally separate these two with a Stanley knife. Wait until the last second, make sure I minimize the gap in between those two base. Then I've added some skirting with the hot glue gun and then as usual, I've aged everything with the diluted brown paint that I removed the excess with wet paper towel. Now I'm going to talk about the covered ceiling. First, I made a template with paper and cut the opening out. Then use this template to copy it on a piece of foam board, 5mm thick. And also cut the opening out with a stainless knife. Then I've covered the inside with thin piece of one millimeter balsa wood, sand down with a nail file. And if there was any, any gap, I used the Pebble Sand Relief as a filler because it's got this really precise applicator, so it's really handy. I keep building it up with more balsa wood until I was happy with it. As you may see, I don't have any back at the bottom of this cover ceiling. The reason is this is for stop motion animation and I wanted to make sure I can have a paper back and actually have some light going through it. If you build it for a dollhouse, you might as well have a piece of plywood, for example, at the back and glue it all to it. It will be more stable and easier to create that way. Then I primed the whole thing with white gesso, paint it, and wait until the last minute to then separate it the same way I've separated the floor into the different sections. And carefully sew it down. Now I'm gonna talk about the doors. I made a template with the paper and then copy it onto a piece of card. Cut the silhouette out with an X-Acto blade. Start building up the design of the door with one millimeter thick basil wood first, and then another layer of three millimeter thick basil wood. And I've primed the whole thing with white gesso, painted, seal it, age it, and then I took a piece of polypropylene sheet and hot glue it to the back. I've made little door handles with some polymer clay, super sculpy in that case, and cook it in the oven before I start painting them. Once the paint was dry, I can super glue them in position. And like everything else, I also aged them with a diluted brown paint that I removed the excess with white paper towel. It makes everything more realistic. Then I decide to tape my door in position so I can reposition them if needed. Now I'm going to talk about the lights. First I made a little shape with some basil wood to create the design I wanted and use some piece of warbler. I warm up the warbler with a heat gun, apply it onto my template, cut the excess with the X-Acto blade when it was still warm, so it's softer and easier to cut. Once it was completely cold, then I can remove it from the template. And I've done the same for the top part and wait until it was cold as well to remove it. Then you can trim it with a scissor. Send it down with a nail file. Then I've cut some piece of tubing. Uh, I think I bought this one in jewelry store. I've placed a piece of wire inside of it so I can actually sculpt and shape the tube. As you can see, with just small pliers until I had the shape I wanted. Then for the glass part of my light, I use some polypropylene sheets, cut some length of it and then I score into it. So I used the stainless knife, but I didn't cut all the way through. I cut deep enough to make a dent, but not enough to separate into two parts. So then I can easily fold it. As you can see, you have a nice clean fold, but it doesn't separate. So there you go, I have all my parts and I just need to assemble them with a hot glue gun.
Now before I can paint them, I need to protect the glass parts, so I use some decorating tape. I love to use frog tape, because for me it's the best. And I cut the excess out with the X-Acto blade. Then cover everything with white gesso, the warbler and the tubes. Apply some acrylic paint. Remove the tape and trim the edges with the X-Acto blade. And then I've added some detail with the paper sand relief in copper this time. And I think those are your detail makes such a difference. Then I drill into my wall, quite large, and group probably a dozen of micro LEDs together and press them into those openings. I've applied some super glue on my lamp and press them onto the wall. Now I'm going to talk about the desk. First I made a rough mock-up in cardboard to get an idea of the proportion and what's going to be right for my set. Then I've used my base of cardboard and add a piece of plywood on top of it so I have a nice clean rectangle to work with and start covering with different thicknesses of basa wood. I've also added some trim with one millimeter thick strips of basa wood. Then I've hot glue in place and kept building it up until all the cardboard is hidden. Then I hot glue them to the worktop. And there you go. To create the chair, I follow the same kind of system, work with three millimeter and five millimeter thick basa wood, make a dry fit first until I was happy with the design and the shape and the position, and then hot glue everything together. Keep building it up until I have the little chair. Then I've pinned the whole thing with the diluted acrylic paint. I've added lots of little props on it. The handles were made with paper sand relief. Then decided I want to create a little lamp for that desk. So I made this one from scratch with some washer for the base that I've super glued together, a piece of tubing, and the top part is made with warbler that I shaped around a piece of basa wood to create this shape the same way I was doing my lantern, for example. Then I decided where the lamp will be on my desk and drill a hole, making sure I had the hollow cardboard underneath, which was perfect. Then position my desk onto my set and decide where I can drill. Then use some micro LEDs and place from underneath through the hole in the set first and then through the desk and finally through the lamp. And I've positioned probably a dozen of those micro LEDs into the lamp and as you can see it made quite a difference. And I was so happy that I've created this little practical light at the last minute because it really added to the animation. And there you go, the set is done. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Next time I'm going to show you some behind the scene of my stop motion animation. Take care.